All right, thanks for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. Uh, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Snell's Law to calculate either an angle of incidence or an angle of refraction. So if we take a look at our problem here. <clears throat> we have light passing from air into crown glass uh, at an angle of 55 degrees, and we want to know what is the angle of refraction. So first thing, um, we know that our two boundaries are air and crown glass, and our Index of refraction for crown glass is given to us, 1.52. And we have an angle of 55 degrees. We want to know what is the angle of refraction. So as we start listing our knowns and our unknowns, we know air is our first substance, and air always has a, an index of refraction of 1.0. Crown glass is our second substance, so N2 is equal to 1.52. And we know that our angle of incidence is 55 degrees. Our unknown value and what we're solving for in this case is our angle of refraction, so we don't know theta r. If you take a look to your right in the green, we have the Snell's Law equation. So at this point, we're just going to start plugging in our values into the equation. Um, we have to keep in mind, though, that when we use this equation, that your calculator is in degrees mode and not radians mode. So first off, N1 is 1.0, sine of theta i, which is 55 degrees. That's going to equal N2, which is 1.52, times sine of theta r. So our goal is to get theta r all by itself. So the first thing that we have to do here is divide by 1.52 on both sides. And when we do this calculation, you can plug all of this into, into your calculator all at once. So sine of 55 degrees times 1 um, divided by 1.52 gives us an answer of 0 0.539. Now, this equals the sine of theta r. Now, remember, we're trying to get just theta r all by itself. So we have to figure out how to get rid of this sine function. Well, if you know your math, then you know to get rid of the sine is to take the inverse of the sine. So to get theta r all by itself, what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse sine function so it looks like this, sine to the negative 1. There is a particular button on your calculator where you can just hit the inverse sine function. And we're going to take the um, 0 0.539, take the inverse sine of that. That is what's going to give us our angle measurement. So in this case, our angle measurement comes out to be 32.6 degrees. Okay. This last step right here of taking the inverse sine, that's usually the hardest step. It's kind of this one additional step that students tend to forget. So make sure that you don't stop at this step. Do not stop here. Go down and make sure that you take the inverse sine of your decimal. Hopefully this helps you solving your own Snell's Law problem. And as always, thanks for tuning in.